the anger index here in Canada, and it's not good, and it's looking a little rough. Yeah, so it's really interesting because uh, one of the things I did today on Twitter was I was like, I'm going to follow every index I can find out there because a lot of times some of these things that are being collected, we just don't know about them, right? Because if it doesn't fit the narrative, it doesn't you know, make it to CBC or CTV or Global or any of them. And so these kind of like fall by the wayside. I think CTV actually did pick this up a couple days ago, but it just didn't gain traction because nobody really knew about it. And like I said, didn't fit the narrative. But what it is, it's, uh, so it's a survey done by Polera. Mm -hmm. And so they are a part of the Canadian Research Insights Council. So they actually have to sign away um, waivers and and, uh, rules saying that they are going to abide by certain ethical standards and certain research codes of conduct and that they are actually going to weight their averages. And so when they're making sweeping statements about a nation that it's weighted based off of uh, location, age, gender, all the demographic metrics so it's it's something that you can actually look at and you go oh okay i I trust this and because it's an accredited institution and so in april they surveyed 1507 canadians and what they did was they asked the questions on the rage index it's called so looking at six questions so the performance of the federal government the performance of the uh, provincial government uh, the state of the canadian economy personal financial situations, social change occurring in Canada, and then news stories that are currently in the in the headlines. And so one of the things that they actually focused on that was really interesting, they did a whole deep dive into the Canadian budget. Mm. But uh, first, though, angry. So it was kind of funny because, obviously, Ontario right now, they're the most angry in the country. Yeah, And then... In their, and this is where I, I thought this was kind of funny because I just said that they're credible. But one of the things that they did on the, on one of their uh, slides was they said, found that Albertans and Ontarians are the most angry. And I was like, well, you've put down that 50%, sorry, 58% of the population of Alberta was rated as very angry. And then also BC was also 58. So it's like, why didn't you say Alberta and BC? Why was it just Alberta single day? But then also Atlanta, Canada, 59% of us are angry. Oh, wow. (laughs) So I was like, we kind of beat out Alberta here. So (laughs) actually just a quick question though. What, like what the, what was the scale uh, that they're working with? Like, is it like angry, very angry or how, how did that work? So, yeah, so they were using a Likert scale. So with, basically five being very angry, um, four being moderately angry or annoyed, uh, three being neutral, two being, you know, you're not angry, you actually like a policy or you're happy, and then one being very happy. So the only way I could see that it would make sense is if people scored higher in that extreme anger category in Alberta versus BC. Mm -hmm. But they unfortunately don't go into that level of detail in in their notes. So it's just kind of... One of those things is kind of funny, especially when you look at the fact that 59% of Atlantic Canadians are scoring that they're very angry to, you know, angry. But anyway, what was really cool about this uh, information, though, was that when they broke it down to the budget, because that was one thing that caused a lot of anger, they said that $40 billion worth of deficit spending made everybody mad in every province across age groups, across uh, political voting spectrums. Nobody was happy about that. (laughs) They're all quite PO'd about it. Oh man. (laughs) At least I, at least I wasn't alone. That feels nice. Yeah. Feel, feel validated because the rest of Canada is with you. But what I thought was also interesting was the fact that when you look at the things that were most popular in the budget though, um, when you look at Atlantic Canada, it's very big on the social programs. So this is where I think like the NDP could actually like they could have a foothold if they were to focus more on some of these things like the school food programs, mental health care, contraceptives and diabetes, Canadian uh, disability benefit, and then child care centers. So it's a lot of social programming issues. Whereas when you're looking at Alberta and BC, uh, it's more focused on housing and infrastructure needs. And I wonder if part of that, because I just recently saw in the CBC actually that Halifax has had like one of the greatest housing booms, like second to none in the country right now. So I think that because we're starting to see so many cranes and so many things being built right now in the city and, you know, Halifax is 
I, I think it's over 50% of the population of Nova Scotia, that's going to skew your information quite a bit. So that's probably also why you're seeing such a, such a move towards more of these social programs and less on the housing front, because Ontario is the same thing. Uh, they had building housing on federal land. That was a big thing for them. That was number five out of the, the top popular things. But all this to say, what was really interesting, though, if we go down just a little bit there, um, feelings towards the Canadian budget. It was interesting that once people put their spin on it, mm. then suddenly everybody was like, oh, I guess I'm not as angry with the budget. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to spin it a few more times and then it, it sounds a little bit better. Is that what this is saying? <laughs> yep. Feelings towards the budget improve after hearing about it. The Canadians are still more negative than positive. Very interesting. Yeah. So... It was it was very interesting when you look at also to who is happy with the budget and who's not happy with the budget. Obviously, conservatives, very wildly unhappy. Only 1% of conservatives said that they were happy with the budget. But when you look at the liberals, though, the vote liberal voters, because this is what this is. This is not members of parliament. This is people who identify as a liberal voter. 50% of them say, like, you know, the, the budget doesn't really do anything for me. I'm, I'm just neutral. I don't like it. I don't hate it. That's pretty bad. If this is your party's budget and you're going half the, the voters are just like meh about it. <laughs> that's not what you want. That doesn't win you an election. So all this to say, this was an incredible piece of work that was done. And this is something that they've been doing for the past two years. And I think that they actually update it every two, three months. So they try and do it in quarters. So We'll have to check in again in uh, another two to three months to see what uh, has changed because they said that this poll that they just did rated us as the most angry since they started doing this. That it just keeps going up and up and up and up. And when did they start doing it? They started doing this two years ago. Okay, so that's so we're working off two years of data, right? So it's one of those things where you know you take it for what it, what it's worth and what the oh, what's worth of salt. Uh, two years is still important. It's still like a good kind of amount of time where it's like the fact it has only increased over time is is concerning. Um, but at the same time, it didn't start in 2008 either um, or 2000. So like there's not a whole swath of data to really go by, but it is interesting to kind of like, okay, you get a gauge where people are at. And as things, as this, as this government keeps releasing things, people seem to get more angry. <laughs> it's kind of the, the, pro, the progression we're seeing, the trend that we are witnessing at this point. And I think it was interesting about where the feelings towards the budget improve or, or, or change after hearing about it. I thought the very angry line was really interesting mm -hmm. where 19% of respondents were very angry, which decreased down to 10% uh, after hearing about the budget. Um, and then here seeing 34% being annoyed or moderately angry decreasing down to 30% and then uh, seeing the neutral emotion increase from 38 to 42% um, after hearing about it. And I think there, there really is something to that in a lot of ways where time goes by, you start hearing people's perspectives on it and it kind of eases the emotions, which is essentially, unfortunately, that's kind of a media's job at this point. Oh yeah. It's just like, all right, let's dissipate the frustrations, dissipate like your emotions that you're feeling right now. It's kind of what's, what's working the facts. Uh, and that's essentially what that what whole situation is and what's happening. And that's why people tune into shows like ours, um, where we're going to do our best not to sugarcoat it for you, but we're also not going to paint the world as the worst thing ever unless it's necessary. Well, and that's the thing, right? Is there, there was elements of that budget that I think are great. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that they want to release federal lands and build homes on it. Like, I think that's an awesome idea. I know where that idea came from. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe the conservative party who keeps talking about how they want to turn the CBC headquarters into yeah. housing. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like it's a federal property that they want to uh, alleviate from the, the burden of Canadians. But it's also interesting, like some of the other things too, like food programs for, for students. Like, I think that's great. I'm all about feeding children. That is your future. You want them to be well-fed, well-educated bright young minds that's what we want in this country so yeah i think that's great and i think that we also have a severe lack of child care services so supporting child care i think that's great what i don't think is great is the thing that everybody else is mad about <laughs> 40 <laughs> billion dollars worth of deficit and so that's kind of one of the things where i'm looking at the in incoming government and i'll say that 
because I think that's pretty much where it's going based on all the polls that we see, where Pierre Polyev has said, you know, we're not going to spend more money unless we find savings for that money. And I'm like, that's where we need to be. We need to, we need to tighten the purse strings. We need to take care of what's important, like the kids. But at the same time, we also need to cut the fat on things that are just not worth the cost. Oh God, I just use it. <laughs> I just use it. <laughs> They're in your head now. Uh, uh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my head, Pierre. Get out. Um, no, the thing that I really thought was interesting was, you know, we talked about how people are really angry about the, essentially the amount of money that's being spent. And yet the messaging from the liberals is they're starting to go into that whole, well, the conservatives are going to be aus- about austerity measures. That's what they're going to be about. And they're trying to scare people of like all the programs are going to cut this, that, the other. And based on these numbers, it's telling me like people are like, yeah, I hope he cuts it all. <laughs> like, people are not fearful of all the programs are going to be cut, at least not the majority of people. Um, at least based on these numbers we're seeing, which I thought was interesting. I don't know if that's my interpretation. Because when I'm looking at the things that are getting the most likes here, the mental health supports, mm. the social supports uh, for pharma care, basically what we're seeing there. And like, I'll be honest when I say that like, I'm not against pharma care. I'm against how pharma care is being delivered in this context. I think that it would be great if we had our own development of drugs, kind of like what New Zealand did. It was either New Zealand or Australia that I actually used the universities to produce their own drugs and funded them to actually develop new drugs as well so that they kept the patent and the IP in the country and then develop things. And then when they wanted outside like pharmacological or pharmaceuticals, those companies had to then compete with the government base system and so that it wasn't to their disadvantage. Whereas our country, they're just going to sell it off to the to the lowest at this moment bitter and then those country or sorry those pharmaceuticals are going to have us buy the nads <laughs> mm-hmm. you know because we've promised this these contraceptives we promised this diabetes medication and we have to deliver on it and we've already signed the contract so then they can just start upping the price and we lose our bargaining power and that's where i think that we're making a mistake with this but to go back to the original point though i do think that these things are are big and that the social problems and and so-called remedies that they're offering in the budget i think they are resonating with people because if you look like that's what people care the most about so i do think if they lean into that austerity measures kind of government rhetoric it could hurt the conservatives but i think that the conservatives just need to lean into the fact that you know the liberal government right now is living on a hope and a prayer they're not actually grounded in reality and that's the case that we're dealing with right now and that it's all smoke and mirrors and that there needs to be finances to back this up and there just isn't right now. That was electric, wasn't it? Well, we enjoyed it. Hope you did too. If you did, you can check this video out here to the top right corner right near my window. Get over, get over, get over. There it is. There it is right there. And if you liked that, you can also check this one out right here. We love you. Have a good one. Peace out.